First impressions are important. In today's lesson, we're going to be learning how we can introduce ourselves fluently in the IELTS speaking test to help us get a higher band score. Coming up. Welcome, my name is Eli and I run the website EnglishProTips.com where we help students get ready for the IELTS test. Now, in this lesson, we're going to be learning how we can introduce ourselves fluently in the IELTS speaking test. So, we're going to be focusing on what to do on the day of the speaking test. So, for example, what you can do to feel more relaxed and especially more confident. We're going to be looking at how to introduce ourselves fluently to the speaking examiner, how to talk about our work, our studies, our home, our hometown, all of those typical part one questions. We'll be looking at some useful grammar and how we can answer typical IELTS questions with perfect pronunciation. Finally, we'll be looking at some tips and tricks to feel more confident before the speaking test. So what can we do on the day of the speaking test? Well, the first thing that I think is very important is to brush your teeth in the morning. I'd say probably one in 200 candidates comes and has very bad breath and it can be very difficult for the examiner to sit there and do a speaking test willingly for 15 minutes. And also examiners, if you're watching this, then you guys should also be brushing your teeth in the morning. It's also important to arrive early for your speaking test. So maybe one in 300 students arrives late and if they arrive too late, they can't do the test. So the night before, just check how you're going to get to the test center and give yourself plenty of time. Also, bring your identification with you. Now this is the one that you use to sign up for the test. It doesn't happen so regularly, but sometimes students arrive with the wrong identification or no identification at all, and in which case they cannot do the test and they don't get their money back either. Bring some water before the test as well, especially if you're like me and you get quite a dry mouth when you're feeling nervous. Try to relax until it's your turn to do the test. Some people like to listen to music or a podcast. Some people like to meditate. For example, Keith has got a great meditation that you can do before you go on to do your speaking test. Some other people will bring something to read just to help them relax before it's their, their turn to do the test. Now, typically in the speaking test, you'll be waiting and then someone will bring you to the examiner or the examiner will call your name. Now, when you enter the room, don't try to shake hands or hug the examiner. Usually an examiner won't shake your hand and they certainly won't hug you. Uh, in some countries, they do shake your hand. However, it should be the examiner that initiates it, not you. So if the examiner tries to shake your hand, go for it, shake their hand, but don't initiate the handshake. Now, the examiner will ask you to take a seat. So they'll ask you to sit down. And then once they do that, they'll start speaking into a digital recording device. While they're doing this, don't interrupt them and don't worry if they mispronounce your name. They'll say something like, this is the speaking test conducted on the 10th of July at Eli's house. Uh, the candidate is Hai Ching Ming and the examiner is Eli Howes. So they'll just have a little thing that they need to record for their own reference. Just sit there and be quiet while they do this. Once they have finished recording, they'll begin to ask you some questions. So let's focus on how we can give our name, how we can introduce ourselves in the speaking test. Now the examiner will say this. Good morning, my name is Eli Howes. Can you please tell me your full name? Okay. My name is Chen Yifan. And what should I call you? You can call me James. Where are you from, James? I'm from Shanghai. Can I see your identification, please? Here you go. Thank you. Okay, so this is the typical conversation between the examiner and the candidate at the beginning of the speaking test. Now, you might not get asked these two questions. 
some examiners ask these questions and some examiners don't ask these questions. However, they will ask you for your full name and they will ask to see your identification. Now, if they do ask you where you are from, then I would suggest that you use English pronunciation for the city or country that you are from. Okay, let's practice this. Good morning, my name is Eli Howes. Can you please tell me your full name? My name is. So, my name is. My name is James. My name is Frank. Okay. And what should I call you? You can call me. You can call me. You can call me James. You can call me Frank. Where are you from? Okay. I'm from. I'm from. I'm from Shanghai. I'm from Shanghai. Can I see your identification, please? Here you go. Okay, listen. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Thank you. Okay. All right. So once they've, once you've given your name, you're going to start part one and the examiner will um, introduce part one by saying this. Now in the first part, I'm going to ask you some general questions about yourself. Let's first of all talk about where you live, your home, your hometown, your neighborhood, what you do. And if they ask you what you do, their first question will usually be, do you work or study? Okay, now my advice to you would be prepare but don't memorize your answers for these questions. So recently, for example, I had a Chinese student and I asked them, do you work or study? And this is what they said. Working as a lawyer involves the practical application of abstract legal theories and knowledge to solve specific problems or to advance the interests of those who hire lawyers to perform legal services. So I immediately thought, wait a second, this is memorized. This isn't a natural answer to a question like, do you work or studies? And sure enough, I went on Wikipedia and I could find this exact text. So don't be trying to memorize your answers, just practice answering these questions. So what would be a better answer to a question like, do you work or study? You could say, I work as a lawyer. So listen, I work as a... I work as a lawyer. Repeat after me. I work as a lawyer. Okay. I work as an accountant. I work as an accountant. So listen, I work as a, I work as a, I work as an accountant. I work as an accountant. I'm a butcher. I'm a, I'm a butcher. I'm a baker. I'm a candlestick maker. Good. I'm studying finance. I'm studying. I'm studying. I'm studying finance. Good. I'm studying finance. I'm studying English. I'm studying English. Okay. I don't study all work at the moment, but I used to study economics. So listen. It's not, but I used to study economics. It's, by used to study economics. By used to study economics. Mm. So it's not, but I, it's by, by used to study economics. So this is what happens when we speak naturally. We get rid of certain sounds and we put sounds together. But I used to study economics becomes, by used to study economics. So I don't study all work at the moment. But I used to study economics. But I used to study economics. Okay, maybe you don't uh, study in a university. Maybe you're a high school student. You can say, I'm a high school student. I'm a high school student. So listen, I'm a, I'm a high school student. 
I don't work, I look after my family full time. So, I don't work, I look after my family full time. So maybe you can look after your family, your sister, your husband. I look after my family full time. Okay, so just give a short answer to this question. You don't need to give a long, elaborate answer. A short answer is perfect. Okay, now the examiner will ask you more questions related to your job or your studies. A very typical one is this. Why did you choose your job? Or why did you choose your subject? Here's how I would answer. Well, I've always been interested in teaching and I enjoy learning languages, so it seemed like a natural decision to become a language teacher. Okay, so why did you choose your job or why did you choose your studies? Let's look at a template answer. Well, I've always been interested in. So, well, I've always been interested in. Been interested in. Try it. Been interested in. Well, I've always been interested in. Well, I've always been interested in maths. Okay. And I enjoy problem solving. So it seemed like a natural decision to become an accountant. Okay, listen. To become an accountant. To become an accountant. Try it. To become an accountant. Okay. Well, I've always been interested in maths and I enjoy problem solving, so it seemed like a natural decision to become an accountant. Now you try. Okay, let's look at some more vocabulary that you can use. I wanted a job. So, I wanted a job. Wanted a job. I wanted a job with a good salary. I wanted a job which involved travelling a lot. I wanted a job which would make my parents proud. I wanted a job which would give me a good work-life balance. Okay, let's look at another very typical question in part one. This one's a tricky one actually. Are you happy you decided to do this job or study this subject? Here's how I would answer. Yes, I'm very happy. My work is rewarding and I get to be creative in my work, which I love. My parents wanted me to become a lawyer, but I'm glad that I decided to become a teacher. Okay, so what do you like or not like about your work or your studies? Let's look at some useful vocabulary. So here are some positive things about your work or your studies. My work is very fulfilling. So my work is very, my work is very fulfilling. Okay, repeat after me. My work is very rewarding. My work is very rewarding. My work is very satisfying. My work is very satisfying. I get along well with my colleagues. Okay, listen. It's, I get along well with my colleagues. So the T almost vanishes. I get along well with my colleagues. Okay, repeat after me. I get along well with my colleagues. I get along well with my boss. Okay, next. I work with really intelligent people. Okay, so listen. I work with really intelligent people. So I work with really. I work with really intelligent people. I work with really in interesting people. Good. There's a great company culture where I work. So there's a great company culture where I work. So again, the T almost vanishes. There's a great company culture. There's a great company culture. There's a great company culture where I work. There's a great atmosphere where I work. Okay, another positive thing about your work. And also these, questions, these answers will also apply to your, um, to your study. So if you're a student, you can just change some of the words to make it fit for your studies. There's lots of opportunities for development. So there's lots of opportunities 
there's lots of opportunities for development. There's lots of opportunities for promotion. Okay, it's a bit more tricky, that one. There's lots of opportunities for promotion. Okay. I've got a very understanding boss. So, listen, I've got a very... I've got a very understanding boss. I've got a very considerate boss. So, understanding and considerate are very similar. I've got a very considerate boss. Okay. Now, here's the hardest one. We get a lot of perks and benefits such as, so perks and benefits talk about the useful things that you get from your work, like health care, child care, maybe you get insurance, for example. So these are perks and benefits. So a nice binomial there. Now listen to the pronunciation. We get a lot of perks and benefits such as, we get a lot of, so that's me slowing it down. We get a lot of perks and benefits. So it's not, we get a lot of perks and benefits. When we, when we connect the speech together, we often get rid of the T's and the R's. We get a lot of perks and benefits such as... So it's not such as, it's such as... We get a lot of, <laughs> we get a lot of perks and benefits such as healthcare. We get a lot of perks and benefits such as free healthcare. Okay. What about some negative things about your work or your studies? Okay, here's one that I hear regularly. I have to work long hours. So, I have to work. I have to work. I have to work long hours. I have to work at the weekend. I have to work at the weekends. Good. I often have to stay late. So, it's not often, it's often. I often have to stay late. So, often, when we're speaking naturally and speaking quickly, becomes often the T kind of vanishes. So, I often have to, I often have to stay late. I often have to meet difficult deadlines. I often have to meet difficult deadlines. Okay. I wish there were more promotion opportunities. So, I wish there were more. I wish there were more promotion opportunities. I wish there were more development opportunities. Okay. Another very common uh, complaint. I wish the managers were more understanding. So, I wish the managers were more. I wish the managers were more understanding. I wish the managers were more competent. So, good. And we're going to emphasize the more. I wish the managers were more understanding. I wish the managers were more competent. Okay, now you'll notice in these last two, we have wish plus the past simple. I wish there were more promotion opportunities. I wish the managers were more understanding. So this is some very useful grammar for when you talk about things you don't like. So for example, I have to work long hours. I wish I more free time. Okay, so take the verb have and put it in the correct form. So we have wished plus the past simple. So the past simple of have is, of course, had. I wish I had more free time. So that means I wish now, in the present, I have or had more free time. So we can use the past simple to talk about hypothetical situations in the present. I don't have free time. I wish I had more free time. Okay, let's focus on the pronunciation. I wish I had more free time. I wish I had more free time. Okay. What about this one? I don't get on well with my managers. I wish they more understanding. So I wish they more understanding. What's the word that's missing here? A past simple verb we need were. I wish they were more understanding. Let's check the pronunciation. I wish they were. I wish they were more understanding. Good. I wish they were more understanding. Good. So we're going to put the emphasis on the more. I wish they were more understanding. Okay. The salary isn't great. I imagine a lot of you are doing jobs where the salary isn't great. So what's your wish? I wish I paid more. I wish I... Okay, what's the past simple of get? It's 
got. I wish I got paid more. I wish I got paid more. Okay, pronunciation. Do you hear that T? Well, not really. I wish I got paid more. I wish I got paid more. So the T is so quiet. I wish I got paid more. Good. Okay, let's move on to another question. Another typical question in part one is this. Do you prefer to work or study in the... Sorry, do you prefer to work in the morning or in the afternoon? Or do you prefer to study in the morning or the afternoon? Here's how I would answer. <clears throat> to be honest, I prefer to work in the morning, but not first thing in the morning. I like to wake up and have a relaxed morning and then afterwards get down to the task that I have that day. Okay, so when do you like to study or work and why? Okay, you can say, I actually prefer to study. So, I actually prefer to study. Try that. I actually prefer to study. I actually prefer to study in the morning. I actually prefer to study in the afternoon. Okay, so do you see I actually becomes I actually. It's like a y sound. I actually. I actually prefer to study in the morning. I actually prefer to study at night. Okay, another one. I like to study in the morning. So I like to, I like to. So it's not I like to, it's I like to. I like to study in the morning. I like to study in the morning. I like to study in the morning after I've had a big cup of black coffee. Okay, repeat. I like to study in the morning after I've had a big cup of black coffee. I like to study in the morning after I've read the news. I like to study in the morning after I've read the news. I like to study in the afternoon. I like to study in the afternoon as I feel more settled. So settled is like relaxed, calm. I like to study in the afternoon as I feel more settled. I like to study in the afternoon as I find it more calm and peaceful. Good. I like to. I like to study. I like to study in the afternoon as I find it more calm and peaceful. Okay. Now, another question that appears or is appearing more and more regularly in part one is this. What would you like to do in the future? And you can say none of your business. No, you shouldn't say that. You should be polite and uh, friendly to the examiner. Um, but it is a difficult question to answer, especially when you're having to answer it on the spot. So take some time now and think about how you would answer it. Here is how I would answer this question. Hmm, I guess I'd like to keep working on my website for now. I don't really have any immediate plans to change my life or lifestyle. I'll just keep doing the same old thing for now. Okay, so what would you like to do in the future? You can say, I'd like to. Okay, but it's not I'd like to, it's I'd like to. I'd like to. I'd like to move to Canada. I'd like to move to England. I'd like to move to Ireland. Okay. I'd like to do an undergraduate degree in fine art. Okay. I'd like to do an undergraduate degree in fine art. I'd like to do a master's degree in law. Okay. I'd like to. I'd like to get a job as a physiotherapist. I'd like to get a job as a physiotherapist. Faster. I'd like to get a job as a physiotherapist. Okay, so what would you like to do in the future? So, practice. <clears throat> Examiner. What would you like to do in the future? And then the examiner might say this. Well, why? So, you say, you would say, or well, the examiner says, what would you like to do in the future? You say, I'd like to move to Canada. And then the examiner will say, why? Now it's very typical that the examiner will ask you why in part one, so be prepared for it. 
You could say, hmm, well, I've heard that Canada is a lovely place to live. I haven't actually been, but friends of mine that live there say that there are many good job opportunities and that Canadian people are extremely friendly. Okay, so before you go to do your IELTS speaking test, practice answering why questions with a partner. Just have them ask you some part one questions and then once you've answered, get them to go, why? And then you have to elaborate on your answer. It's all good practice for the speaking test. Now, another very common topic in part one is where you live. So a typical question is this, has your hometown changed much over the years? Okay, here's how I would answer. Well, I was born in Brixton in South London, and to be honest, I haven't been back in some time. However, I know that it's changed a lot in recent years. It's become a lot more trendy and more expensive too. To be honest, I should probably go back and visit Brixton soon. So has your hometown changed? How are you going to answer this? So here's some vocabulary you can use. Yes, it's actually changed a lot. So listen, yes, it's actually changed a lot. Okay, yes, it's actually changed a lot. Okay, yes, it's actually changed a lot. Okay. It's become a lot more expensive. Listen, it's become a lot more. It's become a lot more. It's become a lot more expensive. It's become a lot more developed. It's become a lot more touristy. So touristy is just an informal way of saying touristic. It's become a lot more touristic. It's become a lot more touristy. There's more high rise buildings. So there's more. There's more high rise buildings. There's more shopping centers. There's a new metro system in my hometown. So there's a new, there's a new. There's a new metro system in my hometown. There's a new tram line in my hometown. Okay, another question about where you live is this. How long have you been living in your home? Quite a tricky question. Well, not that tricky a question to answer. Although it is a question where we can show off our advanced grammar. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. Here's how I would answer. Well, I moved to my current apartment at the end of 2019. So I guess I've been here for over three years now. I like my apartment a lot, so I don't have any intention to move home many time soon. So how long have you been living in your home? Let's look at some of the, the grammar that we can use. So I've been living in my current home. So listen, I've been living in my current home. So current home, we don't really pronounce that T in current. I've been living in my current home since I started university. I've been living in my current home since I started university. Good. I've been living in my current home ever since I was born. I've been living in my current home since I moved to London. I've been living in my current home since I met my wife. Okay, so you'll notice the grammar we have here. We've, we start with the present perfect continuous, so I've been living, and then we have the past simple. So since I started, since I was, since I moved, since I met. And in the middle of this, we have since or ever since. And these are interchangeable. Sometimes we use since, sometimes we use ever since. We tend to use ever since when we want to emphasize that something has been true ever since that particular moment. So I've been living in the same house ever since I was born. I really want to move. So we would use ever since there because we're really emphasizing that it's been such a long duration that we've been living in the same home. So let's look at this grammar and how we can use it. You might get asked a question like, how long have you been doing this job? And you can say, I've been working as a teacher ever since I something university. Okay, so we need the past simple here. So leave becomes left irregular verb. I've been working as a teacher ever since I left university. Okay. Has your hometown changed much recently? Yes, it's been getting more expensive ever since it something 
more popular with tourists. So become, in the past, becomes, became. Yes, it's been getting more expensive ever since it became more popular with tourists. Next question. Have you lived in the same neighborhood for a long time? So you'll get that question a lot in the speaking test. You can say, yes, I've been living in the same neighborhood since I something born. Okay, since I, wouldn't be something since I borned, no. We use a passive. Since I was born. So get that correct. Yes, I've been living in the same neighborhood since I was born. Okay. The final part of this lesson, it's been a very comprehensive lesson, lots to learn, is related to how to feel confident before we go to the speak to do our speaking test. So I get a lot of um, emails and speak to a lot of students that feel very nervous um, before they go to do their speaking test. And I've just got a couple of tips that I'd like to share with you about how to feel a bit more confident. So first of all, I think it's very important that you sleep well in the run up before the test. So not just the night before, but even five days before you've got your speaking test, you need to start making sure that you're getting eight hours of sleep. Um, and one of the best ways to do this is don't revise late at night. Students that revise late at night tend to start feeling a bit more anxious and then that keeps them awake. And then as a result, they don't sleep so well. They get more anxious because they're not getting enough sleep. And then when it comes to the exam, they're a nervous wreck. So don't revise late at night and don't cram. Um, and cramming is basically when you, you study a lot in a very short period of time right before your test. So this is a, an English proficiency exam. It's, it's all the English that you've learned ever since you were a child or since you, university or ever since you started learning English. Um, cramming a language doesn't really work unfortunately. Okay, stay hydrated, so drink lots of water before the test and also in the run-up before the test as well. Remember to give yourself plenty of time to get to the test centre. Um, if you're late or you're running late, you're going to feel a lot more nervous. Prepare for the common topics, but don't memorise your answers. So um, that's what this video was for and I've got another video as well that looks at um, the 10 most common questions in part one of the speaking test. So that'll help you to feel confident. I would also recommend that you watch a lot of practice test videos and that will help you to know what to expect in the speaking test. So listen to um, students that, or watch students on YouTube or on my website, englishprotips.com, where you see students getting band seven, band eight, and even occasionally band nine. And just, um, see the kind of questions they get asked and how they answer and and the more you do this the more familiar you will be with the speaking test and hopefully the more confident you will feel and finally an important one is don't worry if the examiner interrupts you they've got a lot of questions that they need to get through in part one and also in part three as well so if they interrupt you that's fine they just need to get to some more questions um, otherwise, they're not doing their job properly. So don't worry, it's not a reflection on you. It's just they have lots of questions they need to get through. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Um, and um, best of luck with all of your studies. And good luck with your speaking test. Remember, you can always send me an email to let me know how you got on. It's eli at englishprotips.com. All right, best of luck with your studies and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye then.